Hey everyone, so in the last video we covered how to design the calculator and in the uh, second video we got it working so that when we press the buttons um, it seems like a button's actually being clicked. Uh, so now what we do is what, what we need to do now is uh, convert these um, numbers into this input field here and then when we press the equals button we want it to evaluate the expression. Uh, okay, so we'll open up the calc.js file and so we're going to have to wait for the whole document to actually load. So we'll use the window.onload function. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have to access a few things in the uh, HTML page. So we're going to have to access these buttons, uh, the clear button, and the answer field. So what we're going to want to do is when a user clicks on one of these buttons, uh, the value will be transferred into this field, and then when an equals button is clicked, uh, it's evaluated. And then the clear button will simply just clear the uh, input field. So to get these elements from the DOM, we'll use uh, um, the get element by ID function. So buttons equals document get element by ID. And then we specify the ID, which is buttons, uh, buttons. And then we need to get clear and answer. So now we do var clear equals same thing clear and then we get the answer field answer answer okay so how uh, the way we're gonna do this is when you click on one of these list elements we actually want to take the value um, of the list element and put it uh, in the answer field so we're not actually gonna have to uh, uh, add an event listener to each of these buttons. We're just going to add an event listener to the whole parent element. And I'll show you how this works. So we'll add an event listener. Add event listener. I spelled that right. Add event listener. Uh, the event will be a click and then it'll pass in a function. Okay, so buttons add event listener. Okay, so now we'll see that we'll console log the number one. So when one of the buttons is, when any area in the buttons um, div is clicked, then it'll console log one. So let's make sure this is working. So now if you click, you can see that we're getting a one here. And so this isn't just if you click the button, but if you click the area between the buttons. So you can see we're getting a one. Uh, that's not what we want. We actually just want it to work if we click a button. And so the way we'll do this is uh, we're going to check to make sure the type of element that's clicked is a list element. So you can see that we're passing this e, vari uh, e variable here, and that's basically going to return to us some properties um, of the event. So we can do console log e and then target. So now if you reload it and you click on a button, you can see that we actually get the list, the list element. Equals, you get list equals. And this is returning the DOM element. So what you, this is the, the actual DOM element. So you can actually just delete this. You can console log it, and then you can do e target um, style display equals none. And so now when you click on one of them, they actually disappear. And that's what's cool about this. You're getting the actual DOM element and not a reference to it. Or sorry, you're getting a reference to it, not the actual value. So um, so now we want to check if the, okay, let me show you what happens. So if you click on a button, you get a list, but if you click on the space between it, you get the whole buttons area because there's nothing, uh, you're not clicking on a list element. So you get buttons. So what we want to do is check if the list of the event target is actually a list element. So if the target and to check uh, what kind of node it is. What, what, what type of element it is, you could do node name equals list. Button clicked. Okay, so now it's going to only console log this uh, text button clicked if you clicked on a list element. So here you can see button clicked, button clicked again. But if you click on the space between it, nothing happens. And that's what we want. So now we want to get the actual value of the list element of the button being clicked and add it into this uh, answer field. 
Okay, so we'll get the value by doing there v equals e target. And now we're not actually getting the node name, but we're getting the actual value. So we'll use the inner HTML function. And so let's add it to the answer. So answer will be the answer field. And so we'll just add it. So inner HTML plus equals V. Okay. And so now when you click on a button, it should add it to the field. And that's great. So you can do something like 7845 minus 8. But now we haven't actually called an evaluation function. So you equals just added dots, the addition. So we need to fix this up a bit. But now you can see that when you click on an element, it's actually transferring it to the output field. And then also when you click on clear, nothing happens yet. Okay, so what we want to do is check to make sure that the, the variable, that the value that you're getting is not an equal sign. If it is, then we want to actually evaluate it. Otherwise, we want to add it to the answer field. So what we'll do is we'll do if v equals the equal sign, then we'll evaluate here, eval here. Otherwise, we want to add it to the output. And so this is what we get. Uh, okay, so now to actually evaluate the expression, there are some clever ways you can do it, such as building a tree and then evaluating the tree. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're just going to use the built-in JavaScript eval function. So we'll just set the answer the inner HTML to equal eval answer inner HTML. And so eval actually evaluates um, a string expression. So in the console here, if you have something like, if you have a string like two plus two minus three, and you can see this is a string, you can actually eval a and you get one. So two plus two is four minus three is one. So this is a string that was actually evaluated as a mathematical expression. So that's what we're doing here. If you, if it's, uh, if you click on the equals button, it's actually evaluating it here and then setting the value back into the answer field. Otherwise it's adding the value of the button. So now if we click 78 plus two equals, we get 80. Perfect. Uh, the only problem with this though is that since we're calling the evaluation function, if it hits an error, it's not going to print anything. It'll actually just console log an error. So for example, if you do 78 minus uh, equal, you get an error, syntax error. Because what it's actually trying to evaluate is the string 78 minus, which doesn't uh, mean anything. So we want a way to actually print the errors into this field. And in reality, you wouldn't want your calculator app to print the errors into the field, but it's just to give the user an idea of what they're doing wrong. So to do this, and in most languages you would do something similar, we're going to use a try catch statement to try and evaluate it and otherwise uh, catch the error and then do something with it. Uh, and in our case, we'll actually just print the error into the field. So we're going to do try this function, uh, otherwise catch the error. Okay, so we're going to try and catch the uh, evaluation statement. Uh, I copied it here. Okay, so we're going to try it, and then otherwise we're going to get the error here. So we're going to try this statement, and otherwise, well, so if we get the error, we're also going to print the error into the answer field, except we're going to have to print the error. So we're going to print uh, the error message. And so you can, if you want, you can also console log it to see the whole error. So what we're doing here is if the, um, if the button is the equal sign, try and evaluate it. And if you get an error, show the error to the user and console log it so you can see. So now if we do something like 78 plus two, we get 80, cool. But if we do something like 78 minus, minus, minus equal, you get the error here, and we also console log it here, and you can see what type of error it is, reference error. Click on it, get some more uh, information. So, so that's basically it. You have you can get rid of the console log here, just for, for you to see. But with this basic uh, code, you have a working calculator app. The only other thing we need to do now is uh, add the um, clear button, make the clear button work. Uh, so 9.7 plus 8, 
make sure everything's working. Yeah, so it's all working. So now we just need to make the clear button work. And that's really simple. We'll just add a new, so here we added an event listener. Uh, we waited for a click on the whole buttons container. What we're gonna do now is add an event listener to the clear button. And we're basically just gonna clear the, uh, um, the input. So answer inner HTML equals nothing. So let's add some comments, clear button, uh, clicking buttons. And so now we do 78 minus eight equals clear. Yep, so it's all working. So now you can do 9.8 plus 78 minus five times seven divided by two. So I don't know what this is gonna evaluate to, but it should work. And yeah, you get an answer. And now you can do 63.3 plus eight minus eight uh, equals. And now if you if you if some sort of error appears, so if you do something like minus dot, 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 seven, you'll actually just get an error, an expected token. So as, um, as an exercise, what you can do is you can try and spit out the errors maybe on the side or have them alert to the user and don't actually modify the answer field or have it, or you can even restrict certain things from occurring. So for example, if you enter in 78 dot, then you should make it so that, or you can make it so that they can't click this period again. That's one thing you can do. Uh, another thing you can do is if they try and do something that'll cause an error, it'll warn them and say this will cause an error. So there are a lot of ways you can uh, go about this, but basically you have a working calculator app, clear, you can do some simple mathematical, uh, uh, solve some simple mathematical expressions. So this will give an error. Yeah. Okay, you can clear and start over. So yeah, so thanks for watching these few videos on how to make a calculator app. You can ask any questions you want in the questions form below. And you can post some interesting things that you did with your calculator out there as well. And other people can take a look and I can comment on it. So thanks for watching.